Are you sick and tired of lame-ass social media? Are you sick and tired of turning on the TV and being bored to tears? Well, never fear. Roundtable Philosophy is here to save the day, bringing you new and interesting podcasts each and every week. Let's get the party started. Previously on Roundtable Philosophy. We would have had a good podcast, but we had some audio issues, so we apologize for that. Tonight, we're going to talk about a little-known way to stop your butt from hurting. I see all these advertisements for little-known ways to get rid of your mortgage, little-known ways to do this, that, and the other, but I feel like your butt hurting is probably one of the most important things that you should look at. I don't think a proctologist can really fix that, but that's okay. That's why we're here. So I have a few guests with me tonight. Hi, I'm Jim. This is Jason. Hello, this is Ryan. Hi, this is Michael. All right. Well, thanks for introducing yourselves, guys. So as I was saying, we're going to talk about a little known way to keep your butt from hurting. If you have a bunch of spicy hot sauce, your butt might hurt. Or if you sit on a cactus, your butt might hurt. Or if you just like to bitch and cry about everything, your butt might hurt. In tonight's news, my wife sent me an article earlier today talking about a Marine that got married on Memorial Day. And there was a picture that was taken the guy, he's standing outside the room, and around the corner is his wife. They're holding hands, but they're not looking at each other because they don't want to see each other before the marriage. And I'm guessing that they're praying together. Apparently, people were getting really offended. So one of the comments that somebody had made was, you do realize that Memorial Day is to honor the fallen soldiers and not a wedding, right? Given that this is not the perfect image for Memorial Day. And then another person says... My brother was a Marine and dying from it now. Where was their parade? Help. Thank you. When they came back from Vietnam. Nowhere. All he got when he got off the plane in the airport was spit on and called names. He's hooked up to a machine. He's never had a thank you except from family. Wow. A wedding? It's supposed to be for the ones that are gone. And it kind of just gets worse from there. And then people from their family are kind of speaking up for them and whatnot. And I thought that the father's uh, approach was really good. So he said, I am seeing a lot of different opinions on here, which is great. It's that protected freedom we have called freedom of speech. And that uniform you see my son wearing is a big reason we still have that freedom today, among many others. We are a military family. And if you knew Caleb and Maggie, you would know they would never do anything to disrespect Memorial Day in any way. Their mom and I are so proud of you both for putting God first. I saw this and I thought, well, I've seen this somewhere else before. I did some internet research and back in 2012, there's a similar picture except the guy is sitting on, looks like a, like a little bench or something like that. And his wife is in the other room and uh, she too, I guess, wanted to pray with him or whatever if they got married. But Nobody made a big deal about it then because that was three years ago. And I guess everybody's butts just started hurting recently. So, yeah, you know, you have these people. They're trying to enjoy their wedding day. And all these people are just getting up in arms about it. And that's not the only thing that I think people get butt hurt about. My ass hurts every time I see the news and there's nothing but bad news on. Never anything good. Just, oh, today in news, rape, murder, pillage, war. Nobody won the lottery anywhere. Damn, that's a little uplifting. I have a solution for that. It's called Upworthy.com. Is that where people talk about certain topics and they're kind of uplifting or positive? Yeah, it's a news site that has nothing but news that should be upvoted. What about you, Michael? You want to talk about butt hurt since you're in the Navy? I can't believe you went there. I've got one little story. And it involves a Facebook page 
and excuse my language, but I'm just stating the name of the page. The name of the page is Shit My LPO Says. On there was a, uh, a picture of you know, two female sailors. One of them had a tattoo along the left side of her, uh, her waist uh, on the actual side. Honor, courage, and commitment going uh, vertically, each, each word. Well, it was posted on there, and there was uh, a whole bunch of people saying, you know, I'd hit that, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And apparently, the, the female that the picture is of was perusing through the website or through uh, Facebook on that uh, page and found her picture. And she said, well, this is awkward because that's me. And then a couple of uh, posts later, her sister came on and said, I can't believe you you people are doing this, blah, 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 you know, blatantly going on and saying, you know, ludicrous stuff, you know, stuff that shouldn't be said about my sister, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, is that that entire page is about stupid crap that goes on uh, throughout the military and stuff like that. And people go there to make fun of other people. So she's upset she's getting ragged on for tattoos that she has. But at the same time, she's been on this site multiple times for the purpose of ragging on other people for stupid shit that they've done. End of story. So because now she's the one on the firing line, she's getting butthurt about it, basically, is what you're saying, right? Absolutely. So she wants to dish it out, but she can't take it. Yeah, that kind of stuff pisses me off, man. Like, if you're going to be willing to go out there and harass people and make comments and point out their flaws, you got to be willing to take some of that flack as well. As a professional doctor, I'm going to diagnose her with WBS, Wani Bitch Syndrome. However, there are ways to cure this. One involves a steel dildo hit mercilessly in the head with somebody with. The other involves ignoring them, just ignoring them plain and importantly. It works wonders. So, doctor, if I ignore these people that are butt hurt, how will we fix their butt hurtness? Pineapples. So now they're Paris Hilton, is what you're saying? No, that's more of a gynecological problem. Let's uh, think of Hitler. Hitler. Hitler came to mind when you said pineapples and butt hurt. I'm glad you got that reference, actually. That's where I was going with it, actually. <laughs> so, Jim, what's your view on butt hurt? Well, the kind of butt hurt that I generally deal with in my encounters involves uh, Christians, usually, uh, butt hurt Christians that basically are all up in arms whenever gay marriage is legalized somewhere, like how they just did in Australia, uh, I believe it was. And, um, or no, Ireland. Sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, like it's they just... supreme anal pressure with gratuitous amounts of Jimmy Dean sausage with no lubing repaired. Right. Uh, so like every time, every time gay marriage is legalized somewhere like in Ireland or whenever atheist organizations are trying to get religion out of public schools, like the Freedom from Religion. Foundation or uh, I believe American Atheists. Uh, I think that's the one that Dave Silverman uh, is like the head of. And uh, they just really, for some reason, they just are convinced that religion must be everywhere. And if you try to push it out of public schools or if you try to push it out of legislation, then somehow it's an attack on them. So just to clarify, would it be corrected me to say that your favorite group of people would be the Westboro Baptist Church? Well, they sure are interesting uh, to hear from. It's, it's one of those things where I really disagree with what they're saying, but I, I do believe in freedom of speech, and I believe that no matter how hateful their speech is, they should be allowed to express themselves wherever, you know, wherever they don't have, like, not, like, in public schools, because that's, like, forcing religion uh where it doesn't belong but in the public square in the open marketplace of ideas no matter how hateful or how stupid i i support their right to speak it's just that uh yeah they they really get butt hurt when when gay marriage is legalized somewhere especially right around memorial day because they got a thing about gays and dead soldiers it's 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 weird so ryan brought up a good point in the chat 
does a human centipede have freedom of speech? I'm willing to say that only a third has the freedom of speech. The other two seem to be preoccupied. But maybe that's just me. There's always a possibility of Morse code via fart. But then you only have two thirds, not the full third. There is that, but then they would also have to burp their way up the chain. Metal could tap dance. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe learn sign language. Or maybe they learn the hum. Maybe they could be the tap, tap stepping jazz trio. Yes. <laughs> I got something in my front pocket for you. Anyway, so somebody else who gets butt hurt. Parents of kids who play sports. I don't know what it is with everybody today thinking that their kid is special. And they needed a trophy for everything that they do. You participated, you get a trophy. You showed up to one practice, you get a trophy. You lost a game, you get a trophy. Everybody gets a trophy. I don't think you need to get a trophy. I think you need to learn that you suck and that you need to improve on what you're doing because everybody can't be a winner. Everybody wasn't meant to be an astronaut. Everybody wasn't meant to be the president. Certain people get to have certain roles and good for them. But, you know, you, if you want something, you got to work at it. I mean, for the most part, if you put your mind to something, you work hard. For the most part, you can be what you want to be. But some things are just unrealistic and they're unachievable. And that's fine. But just getting a trophy for showing up, that's not going to work. But the parents are like, oh, well, my kid did this, this and this. So they need a trophy. No, they don't. They need to get better. I can only think of right now how many people are athletes in Atlanta wish they had a trophy. They never had a chance of getting in the first place professionally. Poor Hawks and Falcons. Poor Hawks and Falcons. Yes, poor Hawks and Falcons. Are they on the endangered species list? No, but there is the possibility of Raiders, though. Uh Uh-oh. Ryan turned on his camera. He's going to show us some butt hurt. Are you about to show us goatee, Ryan? Goatee, eh? What? (laughs) (laughs) The goatee on your face is really goatee. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm playing now. Besides, as long as Michael's actually here for that, this time, actually. And by the way, welcome back to Michael, actually. After a very long absence from the show, we did miss your presence, sir. This well, you know, me. the boys on the corner aren't going to work the street themselves, so he's been he's been earning his keep. Damn, Skippy, somebody's got to work that corner. Yeah, you're on the, uh, what's it called, the swing shift? Yeah, I was on... Uh... Basically like a rotating type shift work for a while, and it just it threw everything off. So there wasn't any time for me to actually uh, join up with you guys. I missed it, though. <laughs> I really did. Out of curiosity, did you, try to, did you try to introduce PFC Pile to the corner? No, he was too busy blowing his brains out. No one puts Pile on the corner. Except Swayze. Speaking of Swayze, I saw the preview for the new Point Break movie. It's not even remotely related to the first one at all. Like, it's not even going to be a good remake. It's basically a bunch of people that are extreme athletes or whatever, jumping off of stuff like base jumping and wearing squirrel suits and all the other kind of crap. I'm like, that has nothing to do with it at all. And the guy that's like trying to hunt them down looks like Patrick Swayze a little bit, I guess, you know, if, if he was younger or whatever. You know, you have some blonde headed guy. It's not, you know, um, a so counter view style character. So just to clarify, a new Point Break movie is going to pretty much be Dog the Bounty Hunter meets Jackass with uh, parkour. And Mountain yeah. Dew Extreme Baja Blast. <laughs> if you drink too much Mountain Dew Baja Blast, your butt will hurt because you'll probably have diarrhea. Just a thought. I'm going to say traveling to Atlanta makes me butt hurt. I don't know what it is, man. Every like, time you come here, you have some kind of stomach issue. Like, unusually so. I mean, I don't know if it's the air or if it's just that there's so much general shit in the general area of Atlanta that actually infects me with it almost, apparently. But, yeah, that happens. Go Atlanta. You make my butt hurt. <laughs> Let's not forget Highway 280. Those poor little chipmunks that they were defecated upon. Wait, sorry, what now? I said, let's not forget Highway 280. Those poor little chipmunks were defecated upon. You know, when you had to, like, stop and run into the woods? Oh, yeah, yeah. Terrible times, although it could be worse, though. I mean, hell, Jimmy gets so butt hurt after going off a cliff in a small school bus. No. 
speaking of butthurt, I was on the way to class one time and I had about 10 minutes, so it wasn't a lot of time. I went to the bathroom and I was taking a leak and then I thought, oh man, I don't know if I can trust this fart. So I kind of just turned around and like hovered over the toilet and I totally let one rip and there was definitely an explosion. And I thought, oh no, what do I do? So I just quickly wiped and washed my hands and ran away. So I feel really bad for those cleaning ladies. But my butt hurt no more. Sometimes you just have to blow it out your ass, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm kind of more curious about what gets Jason butt hurt. So what, I, I do get butt hurt at a misuse of uh, words. Now, when you, uh, now, when you say again. misuse of words, you mean you mean people using it in the wrong sense or people who have no meaning of the definition of the word or how it's used? Like not really knowing what it means, just throwing at things. Some of my, my pet peeves be like a conservative and liberal and progressive and socialist and fascist. Like that collection of words has almost no meaning anymore. No, not really. Because now it pretty much requires a compass. And uh, <laughs> nobody knows where the hell they're going anyway. So the compass is pretty much worthless at that. Yeah, it's like every time somebody says, that's socialist, I just want to be like, okay, which one of the 30 plus definitions of socialist do you mean? Because I think you're wrong. No, when you say socialist, you mean like Soviet Union socialist or just like free healthcare socialist? Like you're right, though. There are different degrees of that tendency, and there are different degrees of conservatism or liberalism, uh, libertarianism, depending on what degree you seek to aspire with it. And even then, there's just so many different points on the compass, pretty much, and which directions to take along those various routes of rational thought for the political spectrum. But even then, a lot of people don't even know what the hell the weather is outside every day because they pretty much stay in their houses and don't learn a damn thing about the, actually, the actual world they live in. Brian sounds like he's kind of butthurt about society. I am butthurt about society, man. Hell, society is freaking retarded today, these days. Like, I mean, I would at least think that back when I was a kid, society was maybe a little bit smarter than current society. I mean, fifteen dollars an hour at McDonald's? Are you fucking kidding me? I don't even make that now with a college degree at my current job. Or would you like fries with that? <laughs> no, I don't want fries with that. Super size this asshole. <laughs> what if it's Wendy's fries? Oh, uh, God. Well, I only came with the frosty, of course. All right, so you do realize there's two cities that have already passed these laws, one of them being Seattle and the other one being Los Angeles, that have already passed the, the minimum wage increase to $15 an hour. Uh, and it's going to be – I know the one in Seattle is going to be incrementally done, like over a period of the next five years, but it's going to be two major jumps. I'm just waiting to see the, the fallout from this, how many small businesses are going to have to shut down because they can't afford – to pay $15 an hour for the maybe five to 10 people they have working there who are getting a profit margin of maybe like two, 3% on everything that they sell. So I'm just waiting for that fallout to come out. It's actually happened to one small business. I saw it probably about two or three weeks ago. They were having to close up shop because even though that they did increase the prices a little bit, they couldn't afford to keep anybody. They had to let people go and eventually just close up shop because they couldn't afford to be a business anymore. So the other thing that kind of gets me is that the people that are demanding the $15 an hour saying that they can't support their, their family of four on minimum wage, um, you're flipping burgers at the age of you know, 30. Pretty sure you messed up somewhere along the line, and I shouldn't have to be the one that uh, sucks it up for you. I just want to put that out there. You didn't know that? You got to toe the line, man, for everybody. Speaking of... Um butt hurt i was scrolling through facebook because i wanted to try and find a picture i saw earlier so i, I don't know if it's from uh twitter or some other site but this girl kelly made a comment saying steal cigarillos as a black teen you get killed and called a thug molest five children as a white teen you made a mistake and have a tv show <laughs> followed by somebody commenting and saying i wish this whole josh duggar thing would go away i'm so over it yet they're giving it more attention. So all these people are getting butt hurt about the fact that if you're black and you steal something, you get killed. But if you're white and you molest kids, then you get a TV show. I don't think that's necessarily true. I guess that's kind of in backwards order. He had a TV show and people know him 
and are going with it. And so they don't just automatically jump to the conclusion that he's an absolutely evil person that should be killed on sight. In other words, he's actually a human. We have to think about what he did. I don't even know the full story behind it. I just know that I keep seeing it. And I feel like it's just one of those things that people are just, you know, latching onto and they just won't let go. I'd also like to point out that the, uh, uh, ah, crap, I'm I'm having a brain fart. When they did the medical examination, they proved that he was trying to pull the gun away from the police officer when he was shot the first time. So, yeah, maybe if you don't try and pull a gun off a cop, you might not get shot. Just say it. I kind of want to play that video by Chris Rock on how not to get your ass kicked by the police. I feel like that's a public service video that everyone should watch. That has good information, and maybe it'll keep people from being butthurt. I agree. It has an absolutely funny video. Another one you should watch is uh, Racist Insurance. Racist insurance. Oh boy, I can only imagine. You will laugh your buttocks off. That's why I watch Racist Mario on YouTube. Always a great time. Oh, see, there it is, Jason again. Gah! Racism insurance, not racist insurance. Grammar Nazi over here. I'm just trying to help, man. People gotta Google terms. Hey. Nazi is just a socialist party, okay? I thought we were going to try to avoid these compass-type terms, man. Come on. Yeah, dick face. Speaking of dick face, so yesterday, <laughs> Jason came over to celebrate my birthday with me, and we were having some tacos with a couple of people. And I don't know how the conversation even started, but it went dark and terrible very quick, as with every conversation. I said, dude, what if you woke up? And you were covered in penises, like somebody cut a bunch of penises off and sewed them to you so that your entire body had like penises dangling from it. It would almost be like Pinhead from Hellraiser, except you're covered in dicks. <laughs> would that make you butt hurt? So what is it with you and liking to watch stuff that has other parts of other people sewn to other parts of other people? I don't know. I'm really beginning to ask myself that question. Yeah, I think this was a, just a priming thing because we'd been discussing human centipede. It, it was inevitable. It was bound to happen. Afterwards, we had a discussion about whether or not uh, these are functioning penises. And if so, it implies the uh, the ability to make a ton of money in L.A. There is either sideshows or porn industry just in that person's future. And you would get at least $15 an hour. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I just had a brilliant thought. What if you made a movie called Butt Hurt? And it was about a guy that just like ran around and like, jabs his ass at people and like knock them out of windows and on their face like he's just attacking them with his ass and bringing the pain is there a movie already like that i thought it was called jackass i could be wrong it could be but it's almost like the terminator or predator but with butts like that's the weapon you just run around like fling your butt into somebody <laughs> jason me watches the show go off the rails down the cliff and land in a ball of flame um would it be a ball of flames because there's more than one. There's not just one flame. Yeah, Jason, get it we'll right. Flame. Yeah, and it's I. I watch the show, not me watches the show. No, it's slash me. No, there is no slashing. Are you a slasher? <laughs> Your grammar <laughs> is incorrect, me, sir. Look See, no, look it all, up. no, we're all getting butt hurt. <laughs> Speaking of butt hurt, I saw a video one time of this chick that was like strapped up, and this guy had like a massive paddle, and it was almost like watching a grand slam. In baseball, I mean, this guy just like wound up and just like hit this chick's ass so hard, I could see the aftershocks. I didn't know that someone's ass could quake like that. And because of that video, you now think constantly about Denny's every time. (laughs) (laughs) But if you eat too much Denny's, your butt might hurt. But speaking of Denny's, Michael and I used to go there all the time as kids. That was like how we celebrate our birthdays sometimes. Get a little uh, ice cream with blueberries on top. Good memories. And then we play putt putt golf. And that'd probably lose. And that would be butt hurt that I lost. That happened more than once. Just putting that out there. But yeah, we'd uh, free meals at Denny's. We I think what was it, every Tuesday? It seemed like that uh, your mom and my stepmother would take us to Denny's because we would eat for free. Yeah. That's how you do it. It's only until now that there's no longer Denny's that I'm butt hurt. I think I saw one on the way to Tennessee this weekend, but I haven't seen Denny's in forever. Brings tears to my eyes. You know what else brings tears in my eyes? Yes. Onion asses. 
That girl's ass is like an onion. Brings tears to my eyes. All right, so somebody's got to pitch in and say something or make jokes or do something. I feel like the show is dying quickly. The one viewer we had disappeared. We had a viewer? <laughs> there was one. So I don't know if you can see, but it has uh, viewers. Well, maybe only I can see it since I'm hosting it, but it said we had one viewer, and maybe it was just it was too much for them. They, they couldn't take it. As far as butthurt topics, how about uh, fanatics? You know, like uh, Harvey Updike would be a good example. There'd also be mm, religious fanatics, which I put one up earlier. You know, Westboro Baptist, even though we pretty much think it's more of an actual cry for attention than actual religious belief. Al Sharpton would be a decent one to pick up, considering he is fanatical when it comes to anything racist. But yet, solves nothing except get his name out there more often than none. And then we have other people as well. You you can put in uh, a call for jihad. That'd be an example, perhaps. Then again, you'll say the same for the, for the Crusades as well. Hey, and, question for you. Yes. So, if Al Sharpton is a pot stirrer, is it racist to say that's the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> Oh, no. I think it's irony. <laughs> I mean, all he does is just show up and cause more problems. He doesn't prevent or benefit or make things better. He's just like, oh, hey, this is already going sideways. Here, let me just go ahead and kick it off the cliff. Yeah. Maybe we have something in common. That's pretty much what Al Sharpton does. He does nothing to solve any actual problems. He absorbs all exposure from uh, press and uh, makes his own little time to talk about whatever happened. And yet he was never there, never saw what happened, but he wanted to share attention and to watch and listen to him. Yep. That sounds like a hell of a lot of credibility right there. A lot. Anyhow, on the same point, other things get butt but hurt about. How about actors that get paid tons of money but can't act worth a damn? A good example of this would be Schwarzenegger, Sebastian Stallone. I think about that. What they got paid for their movies versus guys like Al Pacino or Robert De Niro, it kind of hurts a little bit inside. It really does. (laughs) Schwarzenegger Schwarzenegger and Stallone don't get paid for being good actors. They get paid for being badasses. And I resent the fact <laughs> that you are besmirching their good names, sir. I'm about to besmirch my hand upside your head. <laughs> How about his butt? <laughs> no homo. It's only gay at the ball touch. Or you look <laughs> in the eye. But no, I mean, in all honesty, dude, think about it, though. Like, for example, a good comedian named Ari Spears. I had the pleasure of watching this guy live in person this past weekend. He brought up a very interesting point about uh, a movie called Heat. Very prominent film, very popular due to having Al Pacino and Robert De Niro within it together acting in the same scenes and whatnot. And they were actually pretty much frenemies on the actual movie. Like, they get along, but they're opposite sides of the coin, pretty much. You have law and then you have criminal. And I'm trying to imagine what that'd be like to have that same movie redone, scene for scene, line for line. But instead, you have Stallone and you have Schwarzenegger. I don't know. I almost had a stroke thinking about it. (laughs) But uh, besides them, I mean, uh, a a good example would be Liam Neeson. I mean, he's one of those kind of actors that has that one role that he's good at. You know, I mean, he's pretty good at playing a serious type actor, but I don't think you ever see him on a comedy movie, probably. Uh, The Lego movie? Um, Taken 3? That's totally a comedy. (laughs) Okay, Taken... uh, First off, Lego movie. Who was his character? Good cop, bad cop. And the good cop was the funny part. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like an actual comedy, man. Like, you know, 50 First Dates, that kind of thing. Happy Gilmore, you know, an actual true overall comedy man. Besides, I think animated films are kind of a 
parlay anyway, because you don't only see him. You hear his voice. That's about it. I, I don't know if I'd be using Adam Sandler as your example of good comedy. Hey, there's nothing wrong with Adam Sandler. I'm not saying he's an example of good comedy. I'm just using it oh, as really? an example for something that people can <laughs> relate. wrong with Adam Sandler. Grown Ups. Jack and Jill. Just go with it. Uh, what's that other shitty one he just made? I forget the title of it. But there, uh, there was a recent one. That he just, uh, Blended. Blended, I think it was called. These yeah, are all Adam. shitty movies. Uh, Bulletproof. Uh, Happy Gilmore. Billy Madison. Oh. Big Daddy. Little Nicky. The Water Boy. I mean, Jim, that, that can be argued either way you want to try to see it, though. But he made a lot of uh, money. Then. Jason? Jason, I got I got Making money does not mean that the movies are good. It just means that a lot of people think that they're worth seeing. For an example of this, see the Transformers franchise. Those movies are dog shit, but people are stupid enough to go see them. Making money does not mean they're good movies. Explosions everywhere. I blame LaBeouf. Totally LaBeouf. Optimus! <laughs> Sorry, Eagle Eye, what? That was a pretty terrible movie. Point has been made. Thank you very much. What was that Rear Window uh, remake he was in? Wait, uh, rear, wait, there's a remake of that? Yeah, it was like Disturbia or some shit. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, it was Rear Window remake, and it sucked. See, well, you see Rear Window, and I think of Secret Window with Johnny Depp. Wait, we can't stop here. This is Bat Country. No, yeah. the uh, Hitchcock movie. Mm-hmm. Michael thinks of the backdoor action. You would, you're in the Navy. So join, what? Uh, why did you not join? I'm confused. Well, why didn't I join the military or the Navy? Oh, no, the the Navy in particular, the submariner force. I never really had a desire if I was going to enlist in the military to join the Navy. But you're big into butt sex, right? Only if I'm giving. That's not what your wife said. How do you know what she said? Uh, internet posts. Internet posts. Mm, can you show me these internet posts? Uh, no. Yeah, because they don't exist. <laughs> See, he was trying to. He, I think he was trying to answer that question, but I, he didn't want to go with the obvious joke answer because the obvious joke answer is extremely offensive, especially if she's in the room. So he was just like, "Uh, internet." He's in the navy. When does he care about decency? I thought we were being censored. Within That's reason, obviously. <laughs> I mean. I've heard Michael speak. The last time I saw him, I didn't think he knew that many words. And then I saw him later down the road, and he was, like, stringing words together, kind of like uh, Rocco from uh, Boondock Saints, you know? No, that was we, a man we, with a sailor's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's 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 stop gang raping Michael. Let's switch over to Jim. All right, Jim. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Your fans are calling you. I, I think it's just that I'm, I'm I'm not the most attractive guy. I I I don't think that anyone really wants to to gang rape me. I'm just that's I'm why kinda, we brought paper bags. It's not just that though. Like my body is kind of nasty, and that's it, why I brought saran wrap. So. Being tied up to loose ends. <laughs> if you try that, <laughs> if you try that, I will put the saran wrap over your face and suffocate you to death. We, we broke your arms. You can't do anything. You're now a centipede with a paper bag over your head. And we drew and we drew a face just like playing from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am offended by that picture that you put in the chat, Jason. I live in New Jersey where the Hindenburg crash happened. And I personally am quite butthurt that you would, in fact, put that picture there. Don't pretend Actually- to care. Actually, I'm kind of butthurt. Well, not for the fact it's New Jersey because, well, <laughs> it's New Jersey. But I'm butthurt because you think that Germans drive that badly. Come on, man. You know it's not true. Wait, didn't they fly? Yeah. That's uh, a blimp, not a car. You're, you're talking all this shit about Jersey. Uh, I don't see you coming down here and saying that to my face. Actually, you have to come up there, not down there. Whatever. Who cares? Because you see, in Jersey, <laughs> we don't learn cardinal directions. Uh, I don't talk like that. I don't know if you noticed, but that's that, that's not my accent. I don't sound like that guy from CSI New York with his obviously fake accent. 
Oh, the guy. blood trail and the suspect and, uh, you know, that got DNA from the from the code. I, I think this is the murder weapon. Yeah, I've been watching that on yeah, Netflix. So. I need some pastrami, man. You know what I'm saying? Give me some water. Feel the thirst. accents just sound so fake yeah. on that show. So tell me, Jimmy, where in New Jersey can I go hunting for the local Snooky population? They say the Pine Barrens. That's where the Jersey Devil supposedly lives. Interesting. Snooky watch smush smush. <laughs> Snooky watch smush 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 smush. Ah! <laughs> Give it to me, baby. Jim, Morgan Freeman, your fan base is calling you. Oh, you want me to do my Morgan Freeman voice? Tell well, me, Morgan Freeman, how was your experience on the Jersey Shore? Well, there were a lot of bennies there, and it was really unfortunate because they didn't know how to drive or where they were going. But there were a lot of women in bikinis, and I quite like that. Unfortunately, the shore has recently been fucked up by a massive hurricane, so that was a bit of a downer. But overall, I'd say the experience was fulfilling. If she got a basket on her bicycle, she's too young for you, man. If she still has the parental controls on her TV in her bedroom, she's too young for you, bro. Aww. If she only owns Snow White on DVD, she's too young for you, Yo, man. His kids still light up. He's too young for you, bro. <laughs> so that's our show. Hopefully you found us entertaining. If not, send us an email and let us know. Go to www.roundtablephilosophy.com forward slash contact fill out the form and give us your feedback if you like you can follow us on our facebook page go to facebook.com forward slash roundtable philosophy you can follow us on twitter twitter.com forward slash rt philosophy other than that just check out our silent weekly basis for new and entertaining podcasts thanks so much